In the previous episodes, we cladded the walls of the van, made window boxes, made a bulkhead, and cladded the doors, and in this one we're getting started on the ceiling. There was already some tongue and groove timber on the ceiling installed by the previous owner and we considered working with what was already there but there were a few reasons why we decided to rip it all down and start again. There were some horrible joins, no mitres on the frame surrounding the ceiling fans and you could also still see the insulation around them and the boards hadn't been installed centrally to the lights which caught the eye and just didn't look right to us and each light wasn't equally spaced either. But most significantly it was 12mm thick timber and that's a lot of unnecessary extra weight when you can get thinner boards like these 7.5mm ones which we're going to use to replace. We're going to start by installing in the centre and working outwards and we're going to reuse the existing lights so I spent some time marking up where we wanted them to be centred to the width of the board and then drilled the holes using a hole saw drilling from both sides to get clean cuts. There was plenty of length on the wires for each light, so moving them to their new equally spaced positions was not a problem. The lights have these rubber things around them to give them a nice friction fit. We can then add the next board and a rubber mallet helps to get the tongue and grooves together. And we're securing everything by drilling some countersunk holes and then adding screws into some plywood battens which are underneath the insulation secured directly to the metal ribs of the van. Some of the boards needed cutouts to fit around the ceiling fans so we marked up where cuts would be needed and we wanted to allow a 12mm gap around the fan for the boxes that we'll be adding later in the video to give a more finished look. In some areas we needed to butt some boards together end to end as the length of the van is 4.5 metres and the longest boards we could source were 2.4 metres. We wanted to disguise those end to end joints as much as possible so what we did was to cut the meeting ends at 45 degrees. So as you can see they slot together pretty nicely and after a bit of sanding to make sure that they're flush, once these are primed and painted, possibly rubbing in a bit of decorator's caulk if it's needed, you shouldn't see the joints. With the boards fitted either side of the fan we could then pop the end boards in and you'll see here that we had deliberately left a gap above the bulkhead panel just big enough to allow us to slot them in above it for a nice finished look. We're using two screws across the width of each board that's just to prevent the boards from cupping as the wood expands and contracts over time. Actually on the back of these boards you'll see that there are some grooves which I expect were made as relief cuts designed to stop the boards cupping too. Then we could fill all of the screw holes. One of the boards would need to be scribed to fit around this plastic trim. So here I'm just temporarily pinning the board to the underside of the previous board. I can then measure the amount of material that needs to be removed and set my compass to that measurement and scribe the shape of the plastic onto that board. I can then take it down and cut it out with the jigsaw. And once I got the tongue into the groove, it fit pretty nicely. For the ceiling fans, I'm making a simple box to fit the space around it using some thin pieces of pine. I can scribe them to the shape of the arc of the ceiling and cut out that shape at the bandsaw. The sides also needed some material removed so I did that with a hand plane. And here I'm offering up each piece and hot gluing them all together temporarily in situ. I can then carefully remove the box and then reinforce those joints with some screws. Hello. Then I'm using some 3mm plywood to make a mitered trim which I can mount to the edges of the box. These boxes are going to be screwed in place to the ceiling, no glue here just in case access is needed to remove the ceiling fans in future. All that was left to cover now were the corners where the walls met the ceiling and we'll tackle that later in the video. This video is sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need and with next day delivery 7 days a week. 
ITS refused to be beaten on price by either Screwfix or Toolstation. I've shopped with them in the past and been very happy with their competitive prices and good service. And I'm not alone as they have over 16,000 five-star Trustpilot reviews. If you use the code RAGANBONE at checkout and spend over £50 excluding VAT, you'll get a free goodie bundle worth £30. Link in the description box below if you'd like to check out their website. The next job was to box in these pillars on either side of the doors. The easiest way to hide these would be to use carpet and some spray adhesive and I think that's what most people tend to do to hide them but the client wanted these ones boxed in. We made up a few blocks like these ones which are going to ease the transition of the top corners to a shape that we can bend the plywood to. And we can screw those directly into the metal. We offer up a piece of plywood making sure it's sitting straight on the floor and scribe the shape of the wall onto it using a block of wood. Then we can cut it out with a jigsaw. And we started mounting a few more blocks around the pillars to give us more material to fix to. After a few adjustments it looked a good fit. We can then make some marks to indicate where to remove more material but we allowed an additional 10 millimeters here because we want to make sure to leave some material overhanging so that we can flush trim it later. With the first piece cut to shape we decided we could use that as a rough template for the pillar on the opposite side of the van knowing that it probably wouldn't be a perfect fit first time but it would be a good place to start from and it was just a case of fitting the panels to the wooden battens. And here you can see that 10mm overlap that I mentioned. And with the sides done we then scribe fitted the top panel to the arc on the ceiling. We got that mounted too and then it was yet more scribing to fit these inner panels which will butt right up to the bits that we'd already added. We didn't really have anything to scribe to for the outer edges here, so instead we made a series of marks every 100mm from the floor up, and then measured the distance between the face panel and the edge at each increment, and then we could make corresponding marks on the back of the ply based on those measurements. Then it's just a case of joining up all of the marks, and that gives us the shape to cut out. It's not ideal, but it worked okay. For the curve at the top corners we struggled to get the plywood to bend enough so I removed some material from the back using the belt sander which helped to give it a bit more bend. For the door holder brackets, originally we were just going to make a small cutout for them, but then we realised that if the wind caught the door, the brackets would probably break through the plywood, so we ended up cutting it all away to allow them to open and close fully, which didn't look great, but this will all be hidden by cabinetry later anyway. Next we can flush trim the edges of the ply using a flush trim bit in the router. This is a bearing guided bit and as you can see it's allowing the bit to cut to the contour of the inner panel and we can finish off the hard to reach areas with the multi-tool. Here we've got the inner panel at the top held in place temporarily just with masking tape and I can get that scribed and cut to shape too. And then I can make some marks at each end and in the middle which I can then join up in order to cut the back edge to shape. and then I could flush trim that too. You'll see that we ended up with some gaps in the corners here unfortunately, but rather than make new panels and waste more plywood, we decided we'd done our best and we'd caulk the rest. So finally closing up the gaps in the corners of the ceiling, I cut a cardboard template of a kind of skewed triangle shape to fit the contour of the corners, and I marked that up onto a piece of pine and cut out lots of these at the bandsaw. Those got secured to the battens in the wall and the ceiling with some screws. I ripped some more plywood at the table saw 
and hot glue was handy here to temporarily hold the pieces in place until we could get some screws in. All these panels are going to be hidden later when we build cabinets in front of them. Same again on the opposite side of the van. And that's it all done. So the ceiling now looks much better than it did before and once it's all caulked, primed and painted I think it'll look really tidy. And we've cut down considerably on weight too. I think I worked out that this 7.5mm thick timber ceiling is about 30% lighter than if we'd have used the 12mm boards that were up there originally. That's if my mass is correct, which to be fair it usually isn't. And the old boards that we took down will still get used for something else obviously as we don't waste wood around here. Boxing in the pillars was an absolute pig of a job to be honest, extremely time consuming and at the moment it doesn't even look all that brilliant but once again, once it's all painted and all the cabinets and everything are fitted, it should be a big improvement. Having now done it, if I were to do it again, I know that I'd be able to do it much better, but that's just the nature of these jobs, really. And to be honest, it's not a job that I'd particularly like to do again. The corner cladding between the walls and the ceiling was basic and really quick to do. It doesn't really make sense to spend more time on that kind of thing because it's all going to be hidden behind cabinets. Oh, and just by the way, we still haven't cladded the large side door yet, but we're going to leave that for now until we've decided how to do it. My preference is to do it in two panels, a top and a bottom panel with no window box and I've got some ideas about how I'd approach that but I think the client is leaning towards the whole door being cladded which is going to present some challenges because it's a big door so we'd need to find a way to join two pieces of plywood together hiding the join as best we can and we'd also need to get all of the tongue and groove effect grooves that we'd cut into the panels to line up by eye with the panels next to them. But either way, it's going to be interesting. In the next episode, we're going to be working on making the upper cabinets. And at this stage, I'm not sure what else. But anyway, stay tuned for the next episode. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of the videos, you can find links to my YouTube channel membership and Patreon pages in the description box below. Thank you for watching.